Hi everybody, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. And this is a video that I'm creating to describe and explain the BCI member ETF or exchange traded fund report, which was enhanced by the BCI team in June of 2020. We've reduced the number of pages of our report from eight to five, and we've made some enhancements that I think you're going to benefit from. So with that said, let's get started. We're gonna go through all five pages with an explanation. Now on page one of the report that you're looking at right now, on the top, we define how we screen for these exchange traded funds, specifically for short-term option selling. Now we have a database of ETFs that we've identified as potential covered call writing and put selling candidates. We screen those. We make sure they have relative strength ratings of 60 or better, which means they're all outperformers. We make sure they have adequate option liquidity of at least 100 uh, open interest contracts. We also make sure that the security itself has adequate liquidity, trading at a minimum of 250,000 shares per day on average. We eliminate all leveraged ETFs with the exception of inverse ETFs, which I'll get to a little bit later on in this video. And so we want to kind of assure that the list of eligible securities will give us the best chances for success. Now also on page one of the report towards the bottom of the screenshot, we have a key that explains all the different columns within the spreadsheet that you're gonna be looking at in just a moment. So the information that we give on these ETFs include the name and ticker symbol of the ETF and the price that it was trading at at the time the report was crafted. Now, in addition to that, we give one and three month price performances. Now, what's new here is in the past, we never gave one month price performance, only three month over the last 12 years. We added this component because we have found that in some situations, not a lot, but in some, we have a security that's been outperforming over the last three months, but in the last month, it's taken a significant downturn. So this new screening process will eliminate those type of securities, and I believe will enhance our returns to even higher levels. <clears throat> now, another column is the implied volatility. It's listed there as IV, and that shows the uh, risk involved with each particular security, which in turn would indicate how much premium we're gonna receive. The higher the implied volatility, the greater the premium, but also the greater risk we're exposed to, to the downside. So each investor can make his or her own decision as to how much risk or IV they're willing to incur. We'll also compare it to that of the overall market or the S&P 500, so we can kind of get a framework as to whether or not the security is much more risky, much less risky, about the same as the overall market. Many of our members trade weekly options, so we list those uh, that have weeklies, so you can kind of hone in specifically on those if that's the strategy you're using. And finally, the list is now sorted by one month return best to worst. And the report, as you'll see in a moment, is categorized in three different ways. Okay, so let's now move on to uh, page two of our new ETF report, which is the spreadsheet that contains all this information. Now, you could see that the uh, columns, as I just told you, the name and ticker of the exchange traded fund, the price when the report was made, and here are the one and three month price performances of each one. And you'll notice that the listing or the sorting is based on the best one month return uh, top to bottom. So 16 to two in this particular example here. Now, um, we also have the implied volatility. So, and we um, list that of the S&P 500. So this particular report, the S&P 500 had an IV of 2906, and you could see the uh, implied volatility of the other securities. Some like uh, FDN was similar, 29. 
Uh, others were much higher, like uh, UGA, the gas fund, was almost double that of the S&P 500. So we can all make our own determinations as to which is the right IV or therefore security for our particular portfolios. Now you could see that there are three uh, rows that kind of categorize uh, the ETFs. So the top one over here is the general ETF screening. So the best performing ETFs uh, in the last one and three month timeframes are on the top. Now we also screen the select sector spiders. Uh, and those divide the S&P 500 into 11 different categories. And we uh, publish the three best performers, once again, over the last month, that's how they're sorted. So as an example, we have XLK, Y, and B, which over the last month was six, four, and three percent up compared to the 1% of the S&P 500. So we list the three best performers of the select sector spiders. Now, if we own those, uh, we're well, owning basically 27% of the top part of the S&P 500. So we put those in a separate category from the general ETF screen. And finally, uh, the lower screen over here, which are the inverse ETFs. And those are securities that move up when the market moves down and vice versa. They are appropriate in only very, very strong identified bear markets. Uh, most of the time, these will underperform because most of the time, the market goes up historically 8 to 10% a year. So the inverse ETFs historically will underperform. But when the market is strong bear, these can come in very, very handy. We do publish them every week in our report. And you could see here that they are underperforming at this particular point in time. They're still sorted one month best top to bottom. That's minus one to minus seven compared to plus one for the S&P 500. And of course, you have the implied volatility and the very last column over there. So, um, you know, generally speaking, folks, we are uh, putting all the information for you in one spreadsheet on one page. And, and when there are a huge number of eligible securities, this will be rare, but that might extend on to another page. But generally, it'll all be on one page for you. So let's scroll down now for the last couple of pages. Uh, and on page three of our report, we explain, define, and list all of the select sector spiders that divide the S&P 500 into, as I said, 11 categories. So uh, we uh, explain it on the top here, and then we list them on the bottom here, the name and the ticker symbol. And so once you get familiar with that, you don't have to come back and reread this page, but it's here for, we have a lot of new members that come aboard every week and every month, and we're very pleased about that, so they can have that available to them. Now on page four of the report, we define uh, and list uh, all of the inverse uh, ETFs. And we explain what they are. QQQ is uh, uh, the uh, NASDAQ 100 and its inverse is PSQ. And DOG, which is a short for the uh, Dow 30. SH is short for the S&P 500. And RWM is short for the Russell 2000. So when the benchmarks go down, these inverse ETFs will actually appreciate in value. And we can write covered calls against them. So make money even when the market is going down. On the bottom portion of page four of the report, uh, we have the IV explained, what, what is implied volatility. We list that of the S&P 500 over here, and then we give our explanation below that. So once again, once we have that understanding of what implied volatility is and how we get to it, we don't have to come back to this anymore. And lastly, we have page five, which is our midweek market tone. On weekends, we publish the market tone uh, from these three different venues, and we do the same midweek with our ETF reports. So the GMI is the general market index uh, published by Dr. Eric Wish of the University of Maryland, where he's a professor there of finance. And um, he has this GMI index based on technical analysis with six different categories. So zero to six, and uh, right now it was five out of six, which is a bullish stance. 
And so that's uh, the GMI. And then we do the IBD market assessment. At the time, was in a confirmed uptrend. And finally, we do the BCI, uh, where I list the uh, ratio of out of the money and in the money calls that I'm using in my portfolio. And I might make another comment, like in this case, I was only 50% invested uh, because of the uh, coronavirus crisis that was hitting the world, the global economy, in June of 2020. So uh, there you have it. You just scroll back and just for one minute focus in on the most important page of this report, page two, which has the spreadsheet. So all that information is here. Uh, what I like to do is I print out this page. I leave it right next to my computer until the new report comes out the following week. So once again, I hope you enjoy and benefit from these enhancements, number one, of adding into the report something we never had before, which was this one month uh, price performance. Uh, we never had that before. So we can eliminate securities that have been doing very well over three months, but have been taking a, a significant downturn recently. And also the fact that we have all this information now on one page where in the past we had different sections. Here, each of the three sections are all found in one place. So we feel that this is gonna be um, more user-friendly and the ad additional information will also enhance our overall returns long-term. So uh, scrolling back now to page one of the report, uh, I just wanna take this opportunity to tell you uh, how much I hope and feel that these enhancements will benefit our BCI community long-term, perhaps even significantly, and how we always look for ways to enhance the products that we produce for our members. So I wanna thank everybody for taking the time to watch and listen to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, I hope you benefit from it. As always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody.